Uh, do you put much validity into the reports now that apparently Kate and William just do not care anymore about uh, Harry and Meghan? They're not really planning on responding to things, dealing with things, keeping an eye on what's happening here? I mean, listen, we've we've all managed to just catch our breath over the last couple of years. I mean, it was literally scandal after infighting after scandal. I mean, we kind of had enough of it, haven't we? And I mean, uh, you can imagine that they have as well. I mean, the fact that is the train is moving a little bit faster now. We've had the sort of wheels of change grinding into position. Again, the language of Buckingham Palace has changed. We've had the year uh, anniversary of the Queen's passing and now what are we going to see over, over the next few months? That includes Harry and Meghan as well. I mean, Harry and Meghan were over in Dusseldorf just a few days ago again for the Invictus Games. It saw a bit of it over here. I don't think it was as a, a big deal as when Harry was within the royal fold, so to speak. Listen, that, I, I'm sure of a, of a fashion that they wish him well. I think they, they wish that Harry and Meghan would go away take stock of what has happened over the last few years and try and make their lives work for themselves because it isn't going to be trash in the royal family it isn't going to be coming out with another book or another netflix series and just using their position to just absolutely lay on the royal family like they have been over the last couple of years where has it got them it certainly hasn't got them you know curried favor with the netflix executives or the spotify chiefs because deals are falling off all over the place where are their friends in california where are their friends over in the UK. And I think that there's going to be bigger fish to fry, aren't there? You talk about William and Kate stepping up to the plate. Well, that is exactly what is going to have to happen. I said about the King being uh, 75 nearly. He's a sprightly 75. But his, his days of big international travel, of this relentless schedule that he likes to give himself whenever he's touring, are not going to last forever. And it's going to be up to William and Kate to take the mantle. And Harry and Meghan don't fit in the picture when that's concerned. Yeah, I also get a bit of a sense that um, they need to rip the band-aid off in terms of giving interviews. I mean, clearly these are, you know, charming, smart people, but there is this eternal fear that if they sat down with someone like yourself, well, obviously you're going to ask about, so anyway, about the brother you don't talk to anymore. Um, if you sit down in front of a, a, a television camera, um, again, the same thing's going to happen. The only way to, to sort of snuff out that fire is to not talk about it all day, every day, but be available to it so eventually the question becomes boring. Do you think that's part of this as well here? Where I get it, the Prince of Wales is sort of, you know, the one step away on his way to, uh, to, to uh, becoming the monarch, but the reality is it's all well and good to have sort of the, the, the speeches, but there's not really interaction there. Do you think that they've got to sit down and actually and do an interview sometime soon because it feels like to me the longer they put it off the bigger the impact when they eventually they respond to everything that's come their way the past couple of years well listen well we, we haven't really heard from william at all haven't we we've uh, you know, I, I mean i can speak to people in the palace all day long and they will tell you that the mood music has shifted from one of disappointment anger to pretty much wanting to leave harry and megan behind get on with the job in hand Again, that might be moving more slowly than he would have wished or Kate would have wished. I think we're going to see some more activity, certainly in the next few months. But in terms of Harry and Meghan, we're not going to hear from them from the horse's mouth. I think we've, we've had seen them, had a lot to deal with. They've taken the, uh, the tact of not saying anything and just let Harry and Meghan rise to the sun and burn out, as you will, because how much more can they say? How much more damage can they do? And I think there's been a sort of rowing back of opinion on them. Everybody may have said that Harry had a, uh, uh, an opportunity and a right to give his side of the story. But once it became, you know, day after day, week after week, it was just getting a bit tiresome. So, listen, I think he needs to kind of step back, take a uh, stock of what's happened over the last couple of years. And so William will as well. And that will speak volumes through his work, I imagine. He will might... Um, you know, we, we might get a book out of him uh, somewhere down the line. We might get a proper, honest interview because I don't think we've had those uh, th those concepts even muted, whether it's from the palace or from himself, about how he really feels about his brother. But I can tell you sort of the, the people that I speak to day to day are, are, are pretty much saying the anger has dissipated, the disappointment has dissipated. It's about trying to get on with his own life now and trying to better himself and uh, and try and work towards the sort of the king and country as it were
Russell, awesome to talk to you. All the best. Continue on with the hardcore uh, job of trying to keep across multiple people who sometimes want to talk, often don't want to talk, but you're the bloke who gets the story. Appreciate it.